So good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to this first webinar under Comparative Culture Studies Research for Forum organized by Delhi Comparatives. So we'll start with a short introduction of Delhi Comparatives as an academic group by Charlika Dhawan. So over to you, Charu. Thank you, Abhishek. Um, good evening to everyone. Um, I'll uh, just introduce our uh, academic group, which is called Delhi Comparatives. Uh, this group started in 2010 by a group of teachers and students from the University of Delhi with a clear objective to explore and understand the Indian literary landscape using uh, comparative methods of investigation. The themes of transmediality and interdisciplinarity serving as our cornerstones, our group's primary thrust is to develop a critical understanding of the cultural and sociopolitical dynamics in a multi multicultural landscape like India. All our research projects and events endeavor to create a sustainable and socially relevant hub that engages with literary themes like comparative studies, literary historiography, pluralistic epistemology, marginal centricism, speciality, di digital humanities, and so on. We are very thankful to everyone whose zestful participation in this in these literary dialogues has perpetuated the expansion of our quest. So uh, I welcome you all once again, and uh, I will, uh, Abhishek, yeah. over to you. Thank you so much, Charu. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, one of the reasons we needed this lecture was also because we are invested in a project of our own, which is the COVID-19 cultural responses, where we are using this model of the comparative cultural studies as well as we, are, we also have other subgroups, which are intermediality, digital humanities in India, which are using this particular framework of uh, comparative cultural studies. So without any further delay, I now invite Professor Amitava Chakravarti to introduce today's speaker. Uh, yes, I mean, okay. Uh, I'm not a student of, uh, I was not a student of comparative literature. So I was a student of a monolingual tradition. And when I started graduating in comparative literature through my own readings, Professor Zepetnik's paper was the most fascinating one that I found. And hence for me personally, it's a very, it's a very good, really nice experience of having him with us now. To be, if we speak of a bit formally, uh, in Though the group started to work on Indian literary cultures, I think more and more we are moving towards a model where we are including not only intermedial material, but also transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary approaches. The COVID-19 project that we are talking about has uh, writers, authors from various disciplines adopting various types of methodology, including anthropological, and cultural studies, media studies, etc. And Professor Jepetnik's journey as a scholar. Uh, 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 sorry to interrupt. Yeah. It's Totosi. Totosi. Forget the second part. Okay. That the whole the surname is one stupid whole thing. But the Tot first. Totosi de Jepetnik. Yeah. Yeah. Totosi de Jepetnik. Totosi. Totosi. Okay. 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 <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. So, I mean, <clears throat> because the issues that he dealt with uh, in various versions of his paper where he talked about from comparative literature to comparative culture studies are issues with which we are dealing with practically right now while we are trying to collaborate methodologies and materials from collected from various perspectives and trying to aspire to offer uh, explanations which will Try, which is trying to make a one coherent paper. So thank you Totosi for accepting our invitation. Uh, Professor Totosi has taught, uh, he's, he is from Hungary. He was born in 1950 in Hungary. And that's why I said Hungary. Uh, most of his education, he went to various schools. The last one was, I mean, he did his PhD in university from University of Alberta. And that's the place where he taught a large part of his, for the, for the largest part, I think, of his career. 
apart from that, he has taught in universities in Germany and USA. He is the founder, editor, founder and editor of CLC Web, Comparative Literature and Culture Web Journal. And he has edited, he has written, apart from writing papers and his own books, he has edited a lot of landmark books, which I think in last two decades have helped a shift in how we do comparative literature and comparative culture studies together rather than keeping both at a distance. He is also, if you go into his works, you will find he has also worked in areas of media studies and other areas. But I think what brings him, I mean, I would like to understand him as someone who tried to navigate a journey, a shift from comparative literature to comparative culture studies, which more and more becomes relevant for us who are within the discipline as of now. So thank you again, Professor Tartosi, for accepting our invitation. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, so the, well, my surname is also a comparative problem, but <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me, how can I get the, the, the lecture, the, uh, the PowerPoint? Uh, how do I get that? Yeah, on so, the uh, so, so, you just so, Professor Stephen, to... I can share your PPT. So, oh. Professor Stephen, if you want, I can share your PPT. So, or do you want to do it yourself? It? Yeah, I can. Well, okay. How do we? How do I see it on the screen? Yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'll just share screen. I'll share your PPT. Okay. So, can you see this now? Uh oh yeah oh yes 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 yeah uh, so, okay and then. I just go, yeah, okay. I just yeah, go I'll, one, I'll one, control, one. I'll control the I'll control the screen. You just let me know when you have to change the page. So I'll just uh Oh I that. see. Okay, okay. And <clears throat> next question. I see only three people. Are we only three in this? No, no, no. Uh, there are there are more people in the Zoom, but uh, they've not turned their video on. So like you know, you can only see uh the three faces because they have their video on. So oh I see, okay, okay, okay. And so how many, how many people are you there? Like so there are a, approximately uh, 46 people as of now. Like they're, oh, wow. They're like, okay. Yeah. okay, 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 okay. And you said you started this in 2010? Right, yes. right. Wow. Well, I guess, I guess this is one of the good side effects of this, of this bloody uh, uh, virus. That suddenly <laughs> we are discovering, you know, like stuff happening. Um, I, I, I mean, I will. Okay, I'll start the the the, the PowerPoint. Uh, I mean, the text now. Uh, but there will be. I mean, okay. I assume that um, that uh, Amitava, the 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 paper you were referring to. Which paper were you referring to? The the one in 1999, yeah. or Oh, that's the one. Okay, I see. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, sure. Um, so, but but you can, but okay. But I assume that most people, the the forty five people, which is a large number, um, you are you are aware of the of of. Um, you're aware of of the one. I did with uh, Tutu Mukherjee, right? Yes, right, 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 yes. Okay, the book, the book that, and of course, yeah. I mean, uh, it's really unfortunate. Uh, uh, I, I didn't know. I mean, I was in touch on and off with with Tutu, and then uh, two years ago, she just passed. I mean, right. uh, uh, yeah. Somebody, somebody from Spain sent me an email saying. Did you hear that Tutun passed? I said, no, why? Yeah, what, what? what? Anyway, okay, so um, anyway, then in, in, in one way, maybe we should all together uh, dedicate this, this lecture to, uh, to Tutun's memory. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I found, of course, I normally uh, over like 16 years or something when, when older people uh, passed, I published 
I published um, in memoriams in the journal in CLC web, like, uh, like Dimitch and, and, and others. But by 2016, I, I gave up the journal. And, and since then it has been edited by two others. Uh, uh, anyway, I, then I didn't, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't. Anyway, I found only one in memoriams of Tutum, which was published by the University of Hyderabad and nothing else, but, but anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how you work these things uh, there in Delhi, but, but I, I, I would like to dedicate this, this thing to, 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 to her. Anyway, yeah. okay, so, so the, the, the PowerPoint, the, the, the lecture I'm, I'm doing is based mostly, mostly and developed a little bit from the one that is in this book, in, 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 the, in the companion, let's call it the, the, the companion. Um, uh, obviously, since I retired, I haven't been as active as, as, as before, but I'm still working ahead. I'm still, I'm still um, uh, publishing uh, stuff. Um, there is a paper coming out soon in, in, a, in a journal about uh, a woman writer because, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to pull all these, all these lines together because one, one of the things in, in comparative cultural studies um, uh, and in my work is also the, the, the concept of feminism. Um, of course, I'm the, I'm the wrong person to talk about it because I'm not a woman, but, but, but nevertheless, we still need men to get in on it and support it. Um, and of course, you know, in the meantime, the Me Too movement happened. And, and anyway, um, this one paper I'm, I'm publishing is about a Hungarian woman uh, author who, about whom nothing ever appeared. She published three novels and uh, was going to publish a fourth one, which was including eroticism and the story of a bishop, a Roman Catholic bishop, bishop who was having affairs. And when the bishop found out, uh, an actual bishop, a real person, found out because she was giving lectures, this, this, this author, um, he got her to put in, he had her put into an, an insane asylum. Anyway, so it's <laughs> so you can see, you know, how then these lines, you know, uh, uh, women's situation, uh, social power, and all that work together uh, in, in, in literature. Anyway, so this is the kind of stuff that that I'm interested in, and 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 and, and work, I'm working on now. Okay, so act the actual to the to the to the lecture. Um, in the in the uh, 1998 book uh, by Rodopi, I put a definition of comparative literature, which which uh, already at that time created some some uh, what's the word some waves because of certain things I said there. I I I I. Put the definitions in point form, and uh, several things created uh, problems, especially because of my focus on English, but which was not, you know, supporting U.S. or 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 U.K. or any kind of colonial thing, because colonialism is also very much part of of this package. Uh, and colonialism against, uh, I mean, my being against colonialism, and uh, but not against English as a language. Um, uh, so that that is an issue. I'm sure we, it's going to come up. Um, uh, some people rejected this. I I remember I was at a lecture tour in 
in in Austria, and I got practically roasted because of this, because of English, because of course competitive literature is is in principle, and here I'm coming to my to my definition. Uh, it's always more than one language, and of course you in India where you have <coughs> I don't know I forget now forty or something different languages. Um, I mean, so obviously the the the, the question of, of language is is extremely important. Uh, uh, should be should be for everyone, not only for for us comparatists, whatever type of comparatist comparatists uh, we are. But but in some places the, the the definition was accepted, and this particular one that I'm I'm going to read in a second, that one I, I don't know if it's still there. I haven't checked for years. Uh, but uh, Princeton uh, accepted it as one of the possible, you know, uh, better definitions. Anyway, so the discipline of competitive literature is in total, altogether, uh, as one, a method in the study of literature in at least two ways. First, comparative literature means the knowledge of more than one national language and literature and or it means the knowledge and application of other disciplines in and for the study of literature. So I'm already combining things there. And second, compared to literature has an ideology of inclusion, which is what I was referring to just a few minutes ago about you know, the, the Me Too movement and, and, and colonialism and all those things. Um, of the other, be that a mer marginal literature, peripheral minor languages and literatures in its several meaning of marginality, a genre, various text types, etc. Comparative literature has intrinsically a content and form which facilitate the cross-cultural and interdisciplinary study of literature. And it has a history that substantiated this content and form predicated on the borrowing of methods from other disciplines and on the application of the appropriated method or methods of areas of study that single language literature study more often than not tends to neglect. The discipline is difficult to define because thus it is fragmented and pluralistic. And, uh, and I you know, discussed this several times in several ways uh, over the years. And because you know, I mean, everybody knows that comparative literature, even though from the three uh, uh, co uh, comparative literature, cultural studies, comparative cultural studies, and world literature, i.e. world literatures in plural, um, only comparative literature evolved and has become a discipline. The others are fields. They're not disciplines. They're not, they could be, hopefully they will be, but they're not yet for a bunch of reasons. One of them is basically the institutional situation that a discipline in the university, in the academe, can only be a discipline if it has not only the intellectual and, and uh, 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 thought uh, components, but it has an institutional base. It has departments, professorships, students, uh, uh, possibilities of work for them after in, in, in particular areas. And, and only competitive literature has that. And, uh, but then of course, I'm, I'm gonna get to that uh, later a little bit. <coughs> competitive literature has had a golden age and now it's not so much a golden age, except, except if we go to other places, but, but the, uh, the, the powerhouses, okay? The powerhouses being, and I'm, I'm getting to this also in a more in more detail in a, in a minute. It's, you know, um, the powerhouses. I, I use that term now to 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 refer to the U.S. Okay, they all. It's always the U.S. because because all these all these fields, study, work, knowledge, the way it's distributed, the way it's worked, it's always tied to. Uh, economic and therefore other types of power. 
and and this is also when 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 you come in with 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 the whole referencing and understanding of colonialism. Okay, so um, I'm not going to continue now with with uh, with uh, the history and references and 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 and, and discussion of compacted literature per se. Um, you everybody know, knows these things. Wow. Well, uh, not everybody, but we do. Um, and and it, it, it's around. If anybody's interested, it's around. The new thing is um, cult cultural studies and world literature. Uh, now, cultural studies is time-wise ahead of comparative cultural studies and the concept of world literature uh, somewhat, not necessarily because world literature has been, of course, around. I mean, this is the whole Goethe thing, you know, and I, we, we know that also. And there have been, and I'm, I'm referring to this in, 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 the, in, the, in the, let's call it the companion, um, there are several references to how the concept of world literature, way before our good friend D'Ambrosch suddenly put it on the, put it on the landscape, uh, in places like Russia has been very important, very much established as a discipline, but only in Russia, in Russia, not in other places. Um, anyway, so uh, latching on to or developing from the problems, short fuss of comparative literature, and I'm noting here only two, yeah, only two. Eurocentrism and its insistence on the nation-centric approach. And, and, and again, you know, if, if I, uh, you know, if you refer to, uh, let's say, Indian comparative literature, um, the nation approach was not very strong there. I mean, I, I don't want to, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I just, I just glean certain, um, uh, historical perspectives of how things that happen. But again, the nation approach, okay, again, that's again 19th century Europe, the whole old revolutions, and then the development of the nation state, which again, unfortunately, comes about again. I mean, we just have to think about Brexit, okay? Uh, it, it's, all, it's, it's all the nation again, even in the European Union, which professed and wanted to get out of that, but we are back into it. And of course we had uh, in the United States um, and, and everybody who hears me remember, I'm not US American. Uh, <laughs> by citizenship, I'm Canadian, which is, uh, which is not like the US. It's a, it's, it's, it's a many, I don't wanna go get into that, but, but it's a difference. There's a big difference. Even though I'm a hypocrite because because I live in the States, uh, because of my, my wife makes a lot more money here and not in Canada, but okay, but we are going back to Canada. We are, we are going back to Canada. We sell the house this, this May, but we're back. But anyway, so this, 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 this nation-centric uh, approach that developed in the 19th century and, and the, the two are in, I mean, um, very closely related, related, Eurocentrism and nation-centric. I, I would like to just uh, point out that there are many other problems with comparative literature. These are just the two main, um, uh, uh, most important perspectives, which I uh, uh, picked. Um, not many, many, many other problems, um, which is why I, 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 I say, except <clears throat> important people, professor, uh, professors, who still insist, and I'm getting to that, on the, on the importance of competitive literature, which in itself is a good thing. But the problem I see is that they are uh, not willing to engage in in even discussing many of these problems, except some of the younger people. Uh, I'm 70, so I'm talking about people who are in their 
30s now and 40s. Um, it started maybe when, when all kinds of voices, and I have a list of, of people um, who started to discuss these problems. But very often, because the discipline itself has diminished in, 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 in institutionally, usually these people, and this is important, they are not within competitive literature departments, but in English departments, in German departments, and so forth. So there is, again, uh, I'm constantly referring to the, the problems of institution, the institutional shape, workings, um, uh, existence of the discipline. So, um, so world literature, <clears throat> the idea of world literature started, um, again, in English, it's mostly Dam Rush and his colleagues, Jal Kadir and all these people. And since then, it has become at least in the, in, in okay. Um, <coughs> um, if I say the West, okay, it's very important uh, to, to sort of delineate terminologically what the reference is used because the West usually is understood as, okay, Western Europe and the US, uh, maybe Canada, maybe Australia. So, so that conglomeration of, of cultures and, and, and countries. Um, but then within the West, because if, if it's not, if, okay, do we include Russians? and Poles and Hungarians and those cultures, do we include that in the West? Uh, and then it becomes slippery because in some cases they are, in some cases they are not. Uh, okay, uh, I, I don't wanna take away from, from a more, <coughs> a more, um, what's the word? Strong worded um, referencing of, 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 of these issues. Okay, so let's go to the, the Pope, I, you know, David, he's the Pope of world literature, um, of world literature. He says, world literature is not an infinite, ungraspable canon of works, but rather a mode of circulation and of reading, a mode that is applicable to individual works as to bodies of material, available for reading established classics and new discoveries alike. Um, well, um, uh, I'm saying that this concept of world literature with regard to literary production, publication, and circulation is similar to the microsystem approaching the study of literature, a system of systems. And then, even though, of course, Damrosh never ever refers to these other people who talked about this for decades before him. Uh, I'm just mentioning two, the two most important people, the German, uh, Schmidt, and Itamar Zohar the, the, in Israel. Um, but, and then, and, then we, and then we go further down <coughs> because Schmidt, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> because Schmidt and even Zohar, they themselves, they don't refer to other people where they got ideas from, like Bourdieu. Norman Densin, Robert Estivar, which is crazy in some ways that I guess that, <laughs> that's a whole other question of you know, the production of knowledge and how when you, uh, quote unquote anyone, uh, you develop an idea, you present that idea, and this is more so in the humanities than in the sciences. In the humanities, very often people come up with ideas as completely their own, which is impossible. It, 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 that can't happen. There's always somebody else who already thought, thought about something, okay? In the sciences, well, uh, it, there there is actually in the sciences, and I'm sure everybody knows that among you, that in the sciences, you can't say, oh, I did this research and I found this, and this is, you know, you have to base whatever you say on previous research. If you don't do that, 
your paper never gets published, you get you get thrown out. It, it, you know, the same thing does not happen in the humanities. It's people say, oh no, no, this is my idea. No, it's not. You know, but anyway, um, uh, this is just a, another uh, what, what what's the word pet peeve of mine that that I just don't like this this history of the humanities where uh, in different languages, but even in in composite large languages like English, people say things um, about things which other people already said, but it's 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 they who in, in, invent the stuff. Very, very in the humanities, in thinking, very, very few new things exist. It just doesn't, yeah, that's the way it is. Um, now, uh, Han Saucy, who is another uh, very important comparatist uh, at the University of Chicago now, or uh, many years now. <clears throat> and I, uh, uh, I, 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 I like his, his, the way he approaches it, even though um, there is a, um, a built-in differentiation, of course, between his definition and Damrush's. He, he, he wrote, the concept of world literature that consists chiefly of a canon, a body of works, and their presence as models of the literary quality in the minds of scholars and writers. Okay, sorry, I have to interject here because you know the concept of world literature consists chiefly of a canon. Okay, that uh, that is already a problem because if we consider world literature as a canon, it's already uh, and what is the canon? First of all, there is no such thing as one canon. It, it, that again, that there are canons. It's plural, not canon. And what is the canon? The canon is established by by uh, encyclopedias and dictionaries and stuff like that, which is again in the background. And I bring in now the, the aspect of, of women writing, which for centuries, women writers were excluded or peripheral, minor literatures are excluded. They're excluded, they're not in the camp. You know, Indian literature. I mean, if you look at any of the, uh, any of these major, uh, world literature textbooks and everything well there is the occasional or this or that but it's 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 all bloody shakespeare you know shakespeare moliere and nothing else i mean how can you create a canon it, it, it just it just does not reflect i'm saying reality that's not how things are never were but but it is what it is and 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 the institutional situation supports that which is why a, an intelligent guy like uh, uh, Saucy says it's a can, a can. Anyway, I disagree, sorry. Okay, but the phrase world literature is not used exclusively in so normative a sense. Another sense, increasingly prominent in recent years, makes world literature be an equivalent, um, an equivalent of global literary history, a history of relations and influences that far exceeds the national canons into which uh, academic department routinely squeeze and package literature. So this is what I like. It, this is this is what I like with with with, with sources, um, uh, understanding of world literature. I'm getting to that in in a minute, but but the, uh, I repeat, the problem again I have is that he's using world literature, and not world literatures. Um, I'm getting to that, as I said in a minute, but the, the, the reference, the, the, the linguistic, the linguistic um, uh, designation I like is word literature, uh, parentheses S and parentheses close, word literatures. Because sometimes linguistically you have to refer to word literature um, grammatically as in singular, but I'm, I'm pushing for the understanding of it as understanding it always, even, even though if it's sometimes grammatically it doesn't work, but it should be plural, never singular. Because if you say singular, then we, they already, then we are already co-opted into the canon being as one. 
and not plural. Anyway, okay, so um, <clears throat> it is not surprising that academic departments nationalize literature. L literature. Departments are an invention of the 19th century university, a supranational media law, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, chauvinism of national canons. This global literary history remains undervalued so long as it leaves untouched by analysis the rival accounts of global history. So again, this is good because, uh, because I'm not sure if um, uh, I'm not sure if it's historically entirely correct um, that departments are an invention of the 19th century university. Well, maybe, maybe he's right. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but, but, but I mean, it, it, it's a model that still and, and today st still strongly overrides anything, uh, what's the word, composite, anything more uh, put together from more parts. And it refers, refers, us to us, refers us again to what I was referring to the 19th century where nationalism as such uh, became the prevalent approach and thinking about practically everything. Um, okay, an obvious improvement on the anachronism and petty chauvinism of national canons, this global history remains under, okay. Um, yeah, a, a model of world literature that made room for the countless literary worlds would be relativistic, not deterministic, okay? So that again is, is very different, a very different definition from from David uh, Dam Damrosh's, uh, but I, I think, I think it's it's closer to the way I would like to see things. Um, Martin Buchner, it's also Harvard, suggests that world literature or world creation literature, as I understand it, thrives on the relations between the two words of which this term is composed: world and literature. Um, it invites us to reconsider the dimension of reference, asking what world and world this literature refers to. The dimension of scale through which some type of totality is aimed at, and by contrast, the decision to use the model as a way of making that that conveys the power and the conflicted nature of encounters with natural, social, metaphysical realms beyond our power to contain them. Okay, so uh, Buchner is also... Um, Expanding, expanding the idea that that world literature can or 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 should be as a as a as a cohesive concept. Um, so uh, again, among many other things, there is there is these approaches are related to the thematic reading and study of literature, an approach in comparative literature, but when has not taken hold in a widespread manner. Uh, here again, thematic reading um, was um, in, in, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and then it stopped. It was strongest in France, um, uh, but, but for some reason, um, it, it just didn't develop. And uh, the thematic approach within literature, which I'm saying, would also support world literatures in the plural. Because if we approach the, the study of literature thematically, okay, so, so uh, sociology, social, social structures, uh, politics, love, um, uh, uh, murder, uh, whatever. Um, if, 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 we, if we would use a thematic approach, which as, as I said, virtually doesn't exist in, in, in anywhere in, 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 in a strong way in teaching or anything, um, we could put into that texts from all over the place, meaning it again becomes a plural, world literatures. But, but anyway, it's, 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 it's not happening. <coughs> now, um, this is a little bit old, but um, you know, it's it's basically I'm taking it from the 1913 uh, um, the 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 companion. I'm referring to the then new 2012 
um, that was a, a year where a whole bunch of, um, in English, uh, important um, uh, uh, collected volumes appeared. Theoda Hans, Damros, Gerald Kadir, and then uh, Mad, Mad Rosen, uh, Rosendahl. Um, uh, but I don't think that things very much changed since. I mean, as I said, I'm not as active in, in, in work uh, uh, as I used to be, <clears throat> but I do keep, <clears throat> I do keep all kinds of, um, you know, um, taps on, on new publications. And of course, these days, um, with our good friends, the, the billionaire Bezos, I don't like the guy, but, but, um, but Amazon, you know, like, uh, you, 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 you can tap in into all kinds of things and, and see practically all publications that are mostly in English, but even non English. So, so yeah, I keep tap on, on things, um, new publications and papers and all that. And of course there, there are listservs. Um, that's an unfortunate thing also. I'm sorry, I'm going off a tangent here, but my journal, you know, I had that uh, listserv uh, in it. I distributed all kinds of new things all the time. Well, uh, that's not happening. Um, the new editors didn't don't have the time or or yeah don't have the the uh, the uh, don't have the time and the uh, interest maybe uh, of, of of doing that. And um, so these days. Um, uh, there is one, there is one, I, I should refer to that. Um, there is another one, the European Comparative Literature uh, Association, European Network. Uh, uh, I forget now what, what the exact title of the, of the association is. They still have a PDF sent around newsletter in which all kinds of things, um, uh, you know, you can, you can at least, I mean, it has a European focus, but it does, it does, refer occasionally to some others. Um, again, the problem is, as I said, that it's the, the, this, this Eurocentric thing that, that, um, that uh, in this association, for instance, as I said, European um, focused, but I don't see why they have to do that. Why can't they include uh, new publications from Africa, you know, uh, relevant, of course, relevant publications uh, to to any kind of comparatist, comparatist thinking, um, but, uh, okay, but, but they, but, but they are not. But it has, you know, a good sort of general information about new books, new articles, uh, new professorships, new, new uh, 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 funding possibilities, and so forth. Um, uh, <coughs> now. Um, so here I'm referring to um, the fact that um, in these books, and, and these books are just examples because it's a general situation, that in world literature and in comparative literature, there is virtually no reference or discussion about cultural studies. <clears throat> and very few references to comparative literature, even, even by comparatists themselves. Now, that's another thing that one could research, <laughs> look into <clears throat> why basically comparatists, which all of these people are, Theodahan, Damros, Jalkadir, and so forth, why in a book or a collected volume of world literature, they are not referring to comparative literature. Uh, is that a political move or what is it? Um, I asked at a, at a conference, uh, it was one of the MLA things, I forget now where, I asked David why, why that is the case. <clears throat> he shot me dead. Uh, didn't didn't reply. Didn't uh, you know? There was no 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 explanation. So I don't know. I don't know why that is the case. But if if we, uh, I remind ourselves about the important differentiation between disciplines and fields. 
But if we if we say that all of them fails, okay, so compatibility is a field now, even then the referencing to each other is like very little. And I don't understand why. I don't have a, a, an answer, but but it doesn't matter whether I understand it why or not. It's wrong. I, I think it's simply just uh, as I said, a lacuna. It, 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 it's it's or plural lacunae. It, it, it's just not good that that this happens. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, even in competitive literature, there there are problems. You know, like. Um, uh, Another area, like I was mentioning thematic, the thematic approach, there is the interliterary by, by Dionys Durishin. And uh, this interliterary, which is, again, you know, if, if, if you take into account in the introduction, um, you mentioned <clears throat> intermediality, okay? Well, intermediality can easily be understood as this interliterary. Okay, I understand that it's, Interliterary is more constricted, intermediality is larger, but still it's thinking, I mean, um, idea-wise, it's, it's, it's not the same, but very, very similar. And it's just a, a brief reference here. So I don't understand again, why just like thematic, <laughs> thematic approach, what happened? Uh, Okay. Somebody said something. Okay. Yeah, sorry Did you guys hear yeah. the same thing? Yeah. Did you hear the same that. thing? Yeah, oh, okay. there, there. that was just a few lines from a popular song, I think. So let's go ahead. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this inter interliterariness and, and interliterary approach is also, it never took hold. Um, and it's unfortunate because it, again, just like the thematic approach, the interliterary approach would have facilitated the uh, storing about strong words, but would facilitate the killing off of, of, of Eurocentrism and, and, and the nation approach. You know, it, it would just, because you can't do interliterary if you just do, you know, German and French and Italian, you, you just can't do that. So. Anyway, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, uh, can you go down to the next one? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, an ideological and political issue occurs occasionally in the United States with regard to the designation of the fields of world literature versus world literatures. This is what I'm ref I, I briefly mentioned at the beginning, um, whereby the contention is the, the, the critical voice is that world literature remains Euro US American centered, while the designation of world literatures suggests a more global and decentered understanding of an approach to the study of reading of literature. Um, the first time this really uh, exploded was in it was the same year I published, uh, we published this, this companion um, at the MLA. Uh, I forget now where it, where it was, but anyway, that's when it, it, it really exploded and, and a lot of people, <coughs> mind you, the people who brought this up, uh, not in papers, but in the discussions after certain papers were again, then 2013, younger people. They were not the established figures. There were lots of them there. Um, not only from, from the US, but from elsewhere. And they are the ones who brought this up, this differentiation between the singular and the plural. And I, I'm saying here, I prefer the designation <clears throat> not as world literature's simple, but world literature and in brackets after the, 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 the pluralization of the, of the concept. Um, and yeah, uh, here, with regard to the controversy of world literature versus world literatures, uh, with the bracket also, um, in the background lurk the problematics of technology, uh, uh, sorry, power and language. And it is undisputed in most quarters that it is English that drives and remains the language 
of technology and industry and its power that is tied to the imperial and colonial power of England and since World War II, the United States. Now, again, I'm sorry, it's, it's very political, but, but this is where cultural studies would bring in um, and does bring in <clears throat> important ways of dealing with, with these situations. And we can't, we can't um, decouple um, from whatever we do in, in the background or in the foreground from our interpretations or understanding of literature without bring, bringing in these uh, perspectives of where power lies. I mean, okay, uh, again, references, references. I mean, uh, uh, Michel Foucault, you know, I mean, um, he's the one who, who, who established uh, the whole um, uh, uh, inclusion and concept of, of, of power in everything. And okay, I understand that we can go a little bit too far with, with, with it and, and not everything is always only power. Um, but the, 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 the concept and workings of power are just as important in, in considering when we deal with whether personal relationships or literature. Um, uh, parallel to the power of English, there is the said Eurocentrism within which uh, main majority languages and cultures enhance literatures. There are other power culture, including French, German, Italian. This is what I was saying before that, okay, so you have, you have sort of uh, almost like a pyramid, almost like a, uh, some sort of um, vis uh, hierarchy we can, we can vi vi visualize. <clears throat> because um, uh, let's say within Europe, you know, there are the Germans who have, since, since the Second World War, again, the, 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 the most uh, the strongest and most important economic power. And therefore, you know, uh, in, in Hungary or in Poland, in high school or before that, people have to decide, okay, do I study English or do I study uh, German? And that all relates to economic uh, uh, power. Um, and then there are the peripheral languages Polish, Czech, Czech, Hungarian, even Russian, even though these languages are like, uh, what's the word? Okay, Hungarian is small, it's unimportant, okay, quote unquote. But, but, but Polish is, is a, you know, uh, numerically, it's, 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 it's a fairly large language. Yet, when it comes to um, word literatures, then Polish is, 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 is on the side, it's peripheral. Um, and then let alone uh, the languages of India, Chinese and other Asian languages. What I'm saying is that it is because of the real and perceived power of English and European languages, why world literature remains with texts in those languages and why so-called peripheral languages remain as such and the literatures do not circulate and do, but very limitedly so. And this is where, you know, David Damrosch, you know, the teaching of world literatures <coughs> and circulation, how important that is in his uh, discussion and also also Sassi. Um, but, but these other things don't happen. And, 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 uh, and this, this develops, this happened historically even, even with, within the peripheral. So periphery within the periphery. There is this, this guy who uh, David Dammer, for instance, really loves, um, Hugo Metzl de Lomnitz, um, uh, a, an important German-Hungarian uh, 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 academic who published uh, the, one of the first journals in comparative literature. And, 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 and he's, he's understood as one of, the, uh, one of the main proponents of the idea of comparative literature coming out from a periphery because he was he was a professor of, of, of comparative literature or literature in in the former Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, in Transylvania, which was uh, you know part of Hungary at that time. Um, but even this guy and and this discussion doesn't come up when people refer to the importance of Maslow that 
he himself was peripheralizing, meaning that following the political situation, political historical situation, when he was, he included everybody in his, in his journal and published work, except Romanians. I mean, think about that. He includes Africa, India, uh, all the West and all that, but because there was a political stress then and it is today between Romanians and Hungarians. And he opted, even though he was German, he opted for the Hungarian side. He excluded the Romanian, uh, uh, Romanian literature. There's virtually no reference in the, any of the journal issues or any discussion uh, they did with regard to Romanian literature. So, uh, yeah, so uh, it, it, it's not good. Um, so while in, yeah, thank you. While in courses uh, on world literature exist widely in the English speaking world, as well as in Europe and Asia, few university departments or, or programs exist. Um, in the US and Canada, there's a limited development towards the establishing of departments and professorships specifically designated as world literature. And everybody's using the singular, which I, as I said, I tried to explain, I don't like. And it remains to be seen whether the concept will develop into degree granting departments. Without a degree grant, um, I started to put together again, uh, I did that, uh, if you remember um, in the 1999 article, I already listed all the different areas and departments where this, what, what exists. and. Um, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I started to go, and it's easier these days, everything, uh, because of uh, you know the internet, um, to check out and compile a list of where there are departments or programs, undergraduate, graduate, of any of these, like comparative literature, world literature, cultural studies, and comparative cultural studies. Um, and there are, um, there's, there's a bunch of comparative cultural studies departments, at least in the States. Um, but it's interesting how they are not, uh, okay. Um, literature is hardly ever the focus. It's art history or religion. There is, there is, um, uh, oh, that startled me. Okay, so the, it's, it's not literature. Um, which is okay. It's not. It's not a catastrophe, but it doesn't help us uh, because. Uh, okay, maybe maybe I am maybe I am <clears throat> um, quote unquote bad person myself here when I when I separate literature as a very large. Um, uh, package of, of 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 ideas and. And, and, and thought and work and, and knowledge from something like art history and, and um, uh, religious studies. Because, uh, okay, I, I don't know, but maybe it could be conceived, perceived. One could argue that religious studies, for instance, could be just as penetrating everything um, as the study of literature. I am not sure. But because it appears to me that art history or religious studies are uh, smaller in, in, um, in content than literature, which is why it would be nice if we could see developments um, in cultural studies and world literature and so, and so forth to develop, but it's, uh, it's, it's stagnant. This is what I was mentioning before that, okay, it's true that most of what I'm saying, I already said in 2013, but since 2013, not much developed uh, uh, to, uh, with, with developments uh, of, of, of degree granting and, 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 and programs and departments. It's basically, we are still at the stage of what, was the situation in 2013? Um, yeah, uh, it, it's another it's another discussion which 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 uh, yeah 
uh, can be uh, made. Um, now, okay, so let's, I'm going now to cultural studies. Uh, yeah, there. Now, cultural studies, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a hot potato. Um, how shall I put it? Um, so cultural studies is practiced as a hybrid field of scholarship that is not located in a specific and established discipline, but grounded in critical humanities and social sciences theories, which instead of any unifying disciplinary theory and methodology of its own, embraces a broad range of theoretical approaches and methodologies. Yeah, cultural studies, is, again, here is different to the discipline of competitive literature because both um, borrow and, uh, and, and, and appropriate and adapt and adopt uh, ideas. Um, <clears throat> but the big important difference is that in comparative literature, very few people, if any, um, uh, agree to the fact that there could be or there should be an ideological orientation. Now, the ideological orientation, that's a whole other can of worms. Um, I don't want to get into it now, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure you read that this huge uh, problem between uh, President Macron in France started a new um, commission to inquire into French universities' um, liberal, and that's in this, this here is a very negative uh, understanding, liberal, but bad, bad liberal uh, approach to things. And, and they were saying, and something like a hundred uh, professors in, in, in France signed this, signed this thing upon which this commission was created, that um, all these political correctness and bad things come from the United States and, and it should be stopped. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, you know, uh, a lot, but anyway, which is absolute, uh, absolute nonsense. Um, so uh, I, I, maybe you heard that, that in France, even the Me Too movement was attacked by, I don't know, famous actresses, Faye Dunaway and people like that. But, um, but when Macron and, and his, his, his uh, academics are saying that all this is bad American uh, influence, they, have, they, have, uh, they know nothing because most of the American uh, uh, feminist ideologies and things like that, uh, post-colonialism, uh, comes from Europe. I mean, Simone de Beauvoir, Sartre, um, you name it. It's, it's true that it's in the US that the, these things were made popular and then turned around and went back to Europe to affect things there, but it came from that area. Or even, okay, again, you know, let, let's get out from Eurocentrism. What about Gandhi? You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's these things moved from here to there to say that political correctness is bad and it's all American and all these ideas uh, should be controlled and not given funding for research. Um, uh, it's, 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 uh, to me, it's absolutely crazy. And of course, the French, just like the Spanish, have not dealt with their own colonialism yet. Not at all. So, yeah, so uh, cultural studies is, is, um, uh, is ideological and is political. And that I think, okay, it can have some negative side effects when something is overdrawn. Um, yes, correct. And then of course, traditionalists will be uh, you know, very happy. Oh, here, look, this is, this is the bad thing that happens. But overall, I think it's important uh, uh, because with that way, cultural studies aims to reconfigure the boundaries of humanities and social sciences scholarship and around new paradigms in theory and in application. Okay. Um, can you go down? Where, where am I uh, here? 
in application, yeah. Um, because of its diversity of methods, yeah, cultural studies can be best defined as a meta-disciplinary idea across disciplines rather than as a unitary field of study. It can be, can be also described as an inter, multi, and even counter or anti-disciplinary, taking its agenda and mode of analysis from shared concerns of methods, recombining numerous traditional and new disciplines to affect the critical study of cultural phenomena in various societies. Again, um, cultural studies, despite the fact that, of course, its history uh, uh, is, is, is British and then American, and then there is this other areas like Kulturwissenschaften in, in, um, in, in German, which developed on its own. So there are uh, certain areas where, where these things um, uh, developed, um, but, but it's, it's um, what's the word? It's not specifically, it, it, it's a possibility to get away from the nation approach. And, uh, and, and even Eurocentrism, even though it, the, the theoretical framework uh, is uh, Western and, and, and European. But if you take, for instance, anthropology, okay, cultural anthropology, I mean, sure, uh, that also is, is I don't have to uh, get into the, uh, the explanations of, of how cultural anthropology, um, uh, you know, uh, misused quote unquote or, or uh, all, all the arguments about the, the white face going to somewhere in Africa and then imposing his or her uh, ideas and understanding. Um, uh, uh, oh, I see, Gayatri Spivak. Yeah, well, she, 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 she's, she's always um, attacked late, late, lately uh, because of her approach. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway, sorry, I, I just saw you guys are chatting uh, about that. Okay. Um, um, so, um, uh, always with an emphasis on the cultural and social context and with an aim of understanding the metamorphosis of the notion of culture itself. So, this, this uh, I find, uh, um, let me put it in one, one sentence. The ideological orientation of cultural studies is a necessary and innovative approach to study of culture and we must include it whenever possible. Ah, does that work? Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Um, rather than privileging canonical works, reproducing established lines of authority, cultural studies aims to articulate the unsaid, the suppressed, and the concealed by dominant modes of knowing, not only of texts and signifying practices, but also of theories in traditional disciplines. Yeah, that, but this, I said this here better. Okay. At its best, cultural studies is, cult, is, is a cultural critique that extols the virtues of eclecticism and embraces a holistic and democratic view of culture through a spectrum of theoretical approaches and methodologies, seeking to make explicit connections between various cultural forms and between culture and society and politics with the aim not merely to be analytical, but to promote change. And that in itself is of course an ideological uh, step. It's an ideological um, argumentation. Cultural studies is always potentially controversial with at least in its origins claiming for itself a radical political commitment and practice of social change. Thus, unlike traditional philological scholarship, that strives to be objective. Cultural studies is explicitly ideological. And yeah, uh, I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, you know, when I, when I try to develop, put together this idea of comparative cultural studies from all these different idea, uh, ideas, this is something I found important and very much wanted to, um, uh, to be part of the whole uh, construct. Okay. Uh, uh, can you, yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, where, where am I here? Although in some of the later versions, yeah. Yeah, true. Uh, 
I, I took out here all the references, but, but, but there, the, there are many. Um, it continues to represent cultural studies, a challenge both to the <coughs> atrophied elitism of traditional academic disciplines and to the hegemonic power structures more broadly. And I mean, I don't know. Um, um, okay. Since, um, let's say from 2000, from the 2000s until 2013, there has, there has been a, a strong development, at least in some places, um, like in the US or not in Canada, um, which is, of course, it's a small country, but, but and, and, and in Europe, <clears throat> cultural studies programs um, and departments, but but really not much, N not and and I'm 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 um, accusing university administrations and how the politics of a particular university works, uh, basically of, of political decisions because of this that 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 cultural studies is is a disruptive, disruptive force um, by which then new things can be, can be found and imagined and, 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 and developed, which is why the institutional base of cultural studies has not developed very strongly. But then there are other problems which I was referring to before that cultural studies is also very, uh, what's the word, self-referential. Cultural studies people, you know, like, uh, uh, the, the, they don't want to talk about comparative literature. They don't want to talk about um, um, uh, other uh, 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 fields, like uh, even even things like um, intermediality. Um, it's if you, if you look at the texts of, of of important cultural studies texts, these these missing points are really uh, uh, glaring. Um, um, now, cultural studies can produce more relevant knowledge than established cultural discourse in its readiness to address everyday life. Okay, I mean, there there be many examples of that. The study of marginalized and popular cultures or in investigating culture and media interests in the creative role of its audience. Audience studies, for example, uh, I that's another area where I, I did some work. Uh, is very important to um, uh, to to do with a cultural studies uh, orientation. Um, now uh, the next one is, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, okay. I this is this is um, I'm just developing this uh, here. We don't have to go through it. It's 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 too a little bit too detailed here, but, but all I'm saying is that, that cultural studies can be understood as a general um, overarching uh, set of thoughts and, and approaches which can help to, to, to make um, all kinds of established fields more relevant and important. Uh, the, 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 somebody at the beginning, um, I don't see the faces anymore, ma mentioned you know, the, the social relevance, re relevance of the study of, of humanities and literature. And this is also a, a, an important part of, 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 my, of my work that, that, that uh, and I, yeah, I've been attacked for that, um, that the study of literature and the humanities in general can survive only if we, the practitioners, demonstrate the relevance of the, the social relevance of, 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 of work in this, which unfortunately, as I said, in many instances gets lost. Okay, let, let's leave this. Uh, it's okay. Uh, so I'm listing all kinds of things. Okay, now here. Here is my thing. Okay. Um, uh, and again, uh, just as I said at the beginning, um, there have been people who used the term and the concept before me. I, I didn't, invent, didn't invent the world, I, it's silly. Um, 
Um, and, and, and there are very few, but there are some, I mean, and, and this is where you guys uh, come in importantly, because I mean, again, institution, okay, institution. The University of Delhi is an important institution. I don't know where you are on the, on the Shanghai world, uh, world rankings, um, but, 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 but it's an important university, not only in India, but elsewhere. So the fact that you started a program, not a program, you started a, a working group of comparative cultural studies, that's, uh, that, that, that's good, uh, it, it's good. Um, of course, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know your situation and I don't know how much support you have from the upper, the university administration, but the good thing would be if, sure, if you can develop, you know, a degree program, you can develop and, and, and do things like that, that's when it becomes, you know, really tangible. Um, if, 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 if you can do that, uh, maybe you can. As I said, I know, I, I don't know. Um, uh, the, uh, my, my knowledge uh, of, 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 of universities in China, I know more about, but India, unfortunately, uh, very little. <clears throat> so, um, so, okay, this is again, not so very important. Uh, I'm just regurgitating the idea that I started this in the late 80s. Um, and, and, and it's basically a merger, a putting together of ideas and knowledge bases and all that of competitive literature. I do not like that this, the, the, the Eurocentrism nation orientation, that's out. But those with cultural uh, studies and idea, particularly the ideological perspective. Now, otherwise, uh, um, I don't want to get into that now because we are running out of time. But but the 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 other part is um, method method because methodology it's it's a problem with comparative literature in itself. It's a problem uh, with world literature, which 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 according to David Damrosch's definition or, and other things he says. He doesn't even want to have a method because he considers world literature as a as a practice in teaching. Um, so a, a methodology is is not there, which has been uh, you uh, for decades and decades and decades. Comparative literature was always the fact that it doesn't have a method. Now I propose a method, but I'm not sure if it's. Uh, uh, radical constructivism uh, and, and the systemic approach and all that. Um, I, I don't think I can carry that through because, because that's too, too detailed, too specific. But I think that it would be important if comparative cultural studies somehow has not only a theoretical base, but a methodological base. Okay, now let's leave it at that. Uh, can you go to the next one? Oh yeah, here, <clears throat> here this 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 idea um, of hierarchy. Um, one thing that that comparative literature as a discipline was good at, some people, although in practice that really didn't happen. But it was said. It was said. And when I was a uh, an undergraduate and graduate student, you know, it was always said by my by my uh, professors that um, Swahili oral literature is as important as German literature or French literature. There's no difference. Um, and that is a basic approach was in some quarters of comparative literature. And I would like to take that approach also and adhere to it <coughs> in, in comparative cultural studies. But I'm not sure if, if that in practice actually happens that way. Um, I'm not sure. In fact, I would argue that it is a professed approach, but in practice, it's not translated. It, it's not hap happening. Um, uh, okay. I okay. I have what is it? Uh, because we have a you have to have a discussion. So how okay? How much time do I have? I have another half an hour. 
uh, you could probably take like 15 minutes after that we need some time for discussion also so like okay so so you give me 15 minutes now 15 minutes now 15 minutes okay okay so forget comparative cultural studies let's get to uh the the, the okay digital humanities can you go down digital humanities uh yeah here okay so um okay this is this is another thing that I've been pushing, and um, which is why I created that journal, CLC Web, and all that. And the whole question of the transfer, the transfer of knowledge. Um, of course, we all know the problem of internet penetration and IT and all that, and the divisions in the world. Okay, that's another problem, big problem. But but okay, we, we leave that apart now. I'm just taking the, 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 the position that digital humanities um, is an important and, and necessary, uh, uh, necessary um, uh, thing. I, I can't have another, I don't have another word. A thing to support uh, the humanities. Uh, I published uh, some, empirical papers and all that, how this is unfortunately still not happening very much. But as I said, <laughs> just the way this, this Zoom thing happened, this pandemic will have other side effects like digital, the digital will have to happen more than it happened until now. Um, and uh, digital humanities and the access and transfer of knowledge um, could be a substantial part of developing comparative cultural studies and how that works. Um, uh, yeah, as it happens from its inception, the internet has been and remains controlled to a large extent by the US, which is a problem. Where new media technology was developed to its current status and power, because of the situation of English as today's language of scholarship and technology. What is relevant here is the internet corollary, namely knowledge transfer in the humanities. And I submit that humanities scholarship ought to be accessible at no cost to readers and scholars globally. Now, this is <clears throat> this is anathema. This is this is like, you know, like imagine Elsevier. You know, if somebody at Alsovi reads this, you know, they, 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 they're going to send assassination teams uh, to, 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 to my house because, because that's not how uh, publishing and knowledge transfer happens, whether in the sciences or in the humanities. I am publishing a paper with a bunch of other people in um, comparative literature studies. Um, uh, and I know the editor, he's a friend of mine. But the journal operates in such a way that over the internet, you cannot find, you cannot find and access a single article, a single article in full of this journal. And it was, uh, I don't know, it started in the eighties, early eighties, okay? Not a single article, everything is blocked. The only way you can have access to it, if you are a subscriber, either as a whatever or, or institutional. You are part of a university and, you, and, and that university subscribes to this journal. Otherwise, no way. That is what I'm called, that's, that's, that, that's colonialism. That's, that's, that, that's just uh, terrible, um, but, but that's how they work it. And so, um, the, 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 the development of, of open access knowledge transfer, I think is, is, is again, sure, I, 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 I know it's a, it's a political and, 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 and ideological stand, which I su su support and, and, and want, uh, want to see to develop. But then of course, there's all kinds of other things coming in, in, into play, for instance, prestige, okay? Um, uh, the journal that I created or, or founded um, 
okay, it's, it, it has a massive, since 2017, uh, the material is downloaded, I'm seeing it here somewhere, um, was uh, uh, 3 million times downloaded the stuff from there. So people are using it, okay? But it does not have the prestige of, for example, competitive literature studies. Because competitive literature studies is in print. Exists also online if you subscribe to it, or if subscription, but it's in print. So there is this, 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 this disconnect between print and online. Which country? From which country, he said. Oh, competitive literature studies is US. And, and, and CLC Web is US. I started the University of Alberta but, uh, in Canada, but, but, then, uh, but then it was moved to, to Purdue because no university in uh, Canada was interested. I, you know, I had offers from all over the place, University of Toronto and everything, but only if I make it subscription based. And I said, no, and I'm still, well, I have nothing to do with the journal anymore, but, but no, it, it shouldn't, shouldn't be subscription based. Subscription based cuts off uh, the possibilities of, of knowledge transfer. Um, okay, uh, yeah. Um, what, what, um, Corporate university that's unimportant. Uh, what am I? Uh, okay, I want to wrap up. Uh, okay, here is one thing there are indications that comparative literature, I don't know where that is. Uh, there are indications, no. Uh, yeah, no, for the next one. No, no, down, down, yeah. There are indications, no. Uh, where? Uh, no, no, further, that, that down, down. Uh, well, okay. Um, it it starts, there are indications that competitive literature as a discipline is experiencing a revival in some parts of the world outside of Europe and Anglophone scholarship. Uh, for example, in Chinese, Arabic, Indian languages, Latin American, and so forth. And this is a good, uh, significant and promising development, not the least, uh, because of the appeal of the discipline in so-called periphery. Although the related concept of world literatures is experiencing a revival at this point, while in many ways a welcome development, because it is occurring mostly in Anglophone, US American scholarship, the notion and practice of world literatures remains limited because it underlines US American cultural hegemony. Uh, by the way, uh, it's another uh, uh, important part, you see, um, if you read anything I ever wrote, I always say U.S. American, because I find it absolutely unacceptable that everywhere, everywhere, everyone, it says when they refer to the U.S., they say American. America is a continent. It includes Canada and Mexico and, and, and Panama, and, and okay? Um, it's either U.S. American, and then you can say you're referring to the US. If you're referring to the US, do not say American. <clears throat> but, but I know that in journalism or even the academe, this is not, this is not, 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 not accepted. Everybody says American literature. Anyway, um, Yeah, uh, there's some uh, something I'm saying that um, uh, one would hope that the current development towards uh, the intellectual revival of the concept of world literatures <coughs> will gain traction outside of US American scholarship and that within US American education, as well as elsewhere, the notion will translate itself to institutional presence. However, the latter argument in favor of world literatures it remains problematic because it would not help if world literatures as an institutional presence diminishes further the presence of the discipline of comparative literature. So that's a conundrum I have, I have absolutely no, no solution for. Um, uh, yeah, despite comparative literature's often proclaimed differentiation and in many instances objection to cultural studies, um, the latter is gaining scholarly interest globally, although at this point with US American and to a lesser with Australian Canadian, and British scholarship. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is another potential problem, of course, that if you if 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 if, if, 
if anyone is cautious to, to different levels uh, against the use of English um, uh, as the main language of scholarship that, 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 that through which knowledge transfer can happen, well, uh, then, then, then we are tied um, to most of the US and to a lesser extent uh, to, to other English speaking countries. I mean, the, 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 the importance of English has become so, so far um, developed that even in a field like chemistry in which historically was German based, you know, today in Germany, scholars in Germany do not publish papers in chemistry in German. They publish it in English. So uh, this is just an example how there is a loss. I, I concede there is a loss with the with with the use of English from the multitude and the and 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 the and the importance of 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 of, of differences in, in, in the world. But but I uh, but I still argue that because of the importance of knowledge transfer, uh, it, 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 it could be, it should be in English along with, and of course, okay, I mean, often I said jokingly that, <clears throat> well, actually, you know, it's the non-English speakers who are smarter because they speak not only English, but they speak their own languages, you know? It's the US American uh, who is uh, the stupider one because he only speaks only English. Uh, so <laughs> I, I don't know. This is this is silly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who is asking? Is she any teacher or professor? Who me? Yeah. <laughs> what was the question? Oh, uh, we can take the questions at the end. Like actually. Yeah. No. While well, you said fifteen minutes, I'm over. So okay. is it ten thirty? We have a half an hour, and then we, we can argue. So uh, yeah. Right. So I'll just take a couple of questions from the chat. <clears throat> Sorry about my cough. I had this. It's not COVID. I have been already vaccinated, but. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe that's from my youth. It's coming back to haunt me when I was smoking. Ugh. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's fine. <clears throat> because uh, this is what I have to say now to my friends when I go out. I mean, those who don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't have Corona. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, do you have a do you have a, a like a sequence, a rule, or something? No, nothing like that. I think uh, Avishek is trying to yeah, decide on which question, question she was. But. Uh, yeah, so. But Professor Totosi, if you can see in the chat box and if you want to decide on which one you want to respond to. The chat box. Oh, chat. Oh, chat. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't. Uh, sorry. Ah, here it is. Oh, uh, okay. So I've always seen this is a power exercise, no matter how much screen that we are defining. The French screen is not very soon. Or if you want, Avisha can assist you. Okay. So what do I Okay. What do? I do? Oh, I, I think the okay, best so thing would be Avisha. I need clarification. Assist of the mode of circulation. Well, so, okay, with the mode of circulation I'm referring to, <clears throat> again, it's knowledge transfer. How a particular idea or, uh, yeah, a research paper is circulated, how knowledge circulates. And that's where institutional aspects, publishing aspects and all those things you know, kick in. And, and, and that's, that's very important how that happens, which is, which is why I'm referring to digital humanities, where many of these things could be, uh, what's the word, uh, rectified, uh, made better, so that people have access. Okay, because I mean, today, look, 
there is an importance, you know, good paper or something, especially in your field, especially your, I don't know, your, your PhD student, you have to develop your dissertation. And there's this paper in comparative uh, uh, literature studies that the journal I was referring to. It's there, you have no access. Your university doesn't subscribe to it. You can't get it. It impacts your, 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 your work. And this is what I'm against. I'm against this kind of uh, not, uh, colonial, uh, col uh, I, this is colonialism. It's the colonialism of knowledge, which is what I call it in, in, in some places. And that's why, that's why the, 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 uh, uh, the digital importance of digital humanities. Okay. There is up to Delhi conversation. Oh yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. I have to subscribe to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, there's a question from uh, Dr. Dina Al Shazli. So yeah? she says uh, so she says wait, wait, uh, she says talking about cultural studies, if there is no precise or definite methodology or theoretical body to start with. So in practice, how is it different from comparative world war literatures? What does it offer, if I may say? Well, okay, one, 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 one big difference between, okay, it, okay. If you understand it correctly, the question is um, between cultural studies and world literatures, correct? Yeah, and also comparative literature. Comparative literature. Well, okay. Uh, one big difference is what I talked about this, 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 uh, the, the latter part is, is the, the, the political and ideological orientation. Comparative literature has no professed called, uh, uh, political orientation. Neither does world literature. Cultural studies does. And I'm saying that both comparative literature, comparative cultural studies and world literature should take that, should adopt it, should use it. All right. Uh, there is another question by Keshav Bansal. He says that uh, uh, Gayatri Spivak, in her call for a new comparative literature, proposes a model of planetarity that is imagined from the mm -hmm. pre-capitalist cultures of the planet. She imagines collectivities uh, whose existence have not been so far even been recognized by the existing world order that will cross borders and figure themselves as planetary rather than continental, global, or worldly. What are your views on the idea mm -hmm. or imagination of future anteriority or uh, to comeness, which is envisaged as eventually displacing Eurocentrism, post-colonialism, neo-nationalism, and even cultural studies? Yeah, well, um, this is, okay. Um, if I understand the question correctly, this is a, a uh, what's the word? It, it, application, it's, 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 it's a practical, practical, uh, uh, practicality type question. Um, uh, well, look, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm very negative <clears throat> because as I said several times, colonialism hasn't disappeared. I don't think we are, okay, if, if you look at the, his, the, the historical timelines, you know, we, we talk about post-colonialism. There is no post-colonialism in my opinion. There is still colonialism. Okay, it changed. Okay, so it's it's now not the British going to India and killing everybody. Okay, that's that's different. Um, it, not like the nineteenth century, but still, um, U.S. American colonialism is very much alive and very much working every day. Okay, um, and 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 the same thing. The same thing. I mean, okay. Um, there's the German car maker Volkswagen. Okay, and Germany, uh, Germany's economic power is to a large extent um, based on its car industry. Um, with the pandemic, uh, their sales of cars plunged. Okay, so there's a problem, and and now they are doing two things. One, which is a maybe a good thing, uh, um, develop. Uh, very strongly invest a lot of money into the, into making electro, uh, uh, electric cars. Okay, uh, good, good, good. Uh, the environment and all that. Um, but the other things they are doing is now they're focusing on China. China is doing all kinds of bad things. The Germans in the European Union 
and against the US do not want to criticize China, what they're doing with the Uyghurs and, and anything like that, be, because they want to sell their cars in China. So, <laughs> and what is that if that, if, if that is not, not a, 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 uh, an aspect, a perspective, a doing of colonialism? So, um, yeah, or nationalism. I mean, look at, look at what's happening everywhere. You know, uh, uh, you know you, you, your own problems with uh, with Pakistan, India and Pakistan. Every, I mean, we were thinking. I was thinking. I don't know, twenty years ago, that nationalism is is on its way out. No, it's not. Not at all. And it's it's basically again. You know, I mean, we are all we are all a speck of time. You know, I mean, it, it, it's you know born and disappear. But but if you look at the history. The, the sort of let, let's say you look at the last hundred years of history, okay? Um, all the developments, all the things, uh, nothing, nothing really. Um, I don't know. There was a professor uh, at Harvard who published. I forget his name now. Who published a book that that the world has become so much better. Um, you know, uh, uh, he, he was uh, he was a he. He was comparing. Um, the things that happen in the Middle Ages in different parts of the world and how those things are not happening. Well, I'm not sure. I I, I can't take that positive positive view. So so uh, yeah, in principle, I would take I would take anything, including including uh, uh, Gayatri Spivak's uh, proposal to 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 uh, what, what how did she say? Uh, uh, collectivities. It's basically okay. Let's put this with the collective approach, okay? And how you penetrate borders? Absolutely, uh, sure. But 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 I'm not I'm not um, positive. I'm not happy of 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 at all of what's happening today. Um, uh, sure, there are certain things you know, like it, it makes me very happy. For instance, that. Suddenly, you know, I don't know. Some somebody contacted me, and 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 we, I discovered this 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 group in at the University of Delhi who is who is uh, thinking probably in many ways similar to to my thinking. And then now we are on Zoom. Great. Okay. So there are certain good things, but with regard to uh, Bansai uh, Keshav's uh, 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 question, well, um, I think. I think that 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 of course you can't be negative all the time. So Gayatri Spivak's uh, approach and thinking is was positive. It 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 <clears throat> it's a positive approach to things, and that's good. It's just that I don't share her and her 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 uh, positive outlook. That's best I can say. Cultures, if there are no presentation methods in the studio. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, okay, this is another thing that I was trying to do within comparative literature already in my in my early career, basically develop methodologies. But that's a problem because I can't I can't imagine to develop uh, comparative cultural studies, uh, uh, you know, uh, with a methodology. Um, as I said, what I use radical constructivism and a systems approach. And, and say that, oh, that is the methodology of comparative cultural studies. That would be crazy. You, you can't do that. Uh, so I don't have an answer. I don't know. But I think that to create good knowledge, you know, good work, pick your methodology, but pick one. That's. Okay, so there is one more question from uh, Dr. Dina Ishtarsley. She says that I've always seen comparative literature as a discipline of power exercise, no matter how we always claim that we are departing the French school and embracing the American school of universalism. Uh, simply the melting pot becomes the global rule. My first question is, don't you agree with me that we have many names for the very same concepts? I mean, comparative literature, world literature and literatures have always attempted the same call. My second question is that uh, is world literature the uh, currently accepted and more practical term for the concept? Is comparative literature an outdated term? And if so, how does the post-COVID situation affect the field? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the first question. Right. Right. I mean, 
I mean, cumulative resolution interest have always been the same car. Well, yeah, the, 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 well, okay. So first of all, there is a there is a timeline difference. Okay, when did comparative literature come about? Where, how, and then and then the other fields. Okay, um, uh, I would say there are some similarities, overlap, but if you look into them, and this is what I've been doing, um, there are differences. There are significant differences. One difference is what I, we, we, uh, the, the previous question, and I re re respond to that, that one thing is what is in cultural studies, the, the ideological components, the, the political component, that did not and still does not exist in, in world literature or um, comparative literature. It doesn't, it never did. So that is, a, that is for instance, one big difference between, between these, the, 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 these, um, these fields. Um, so no, no, we did not have the same call. Uh, I, 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 yeah, no. And then world literature, differentiating itself from comparative literature. Okay, world literature doesn't mention cultural studies. I said that, it, it just, the, cultural studies doesn't exist for them. Okay, and they do not mention competitive literature much either, but it's obvious that they're coming from there. But they are different, there are differences because competitive literature did not have all the theoretical methodological components which other disciplines do have, but at the same time, it did create a large body of work. World literature is conceived and understood as a teaching, it's practice, it's teaching. And it's through teaching by which the practitioners of world literature follow, following uh, David Damrush think that the landscape could be changed, which does have a good point. Basically, if you approach it through teaching, that's teaching in this context, it's almost the same as what I was referring to a thematic approach. The problem that the thematic approach didn't develop, maybe teaching will develop because with teaching, you can take, you can take all kinds of things from other places and therefore eliminate the nation's uh, approach and the Eurocentric approach. So uh, that, okay. Second question, what is the currently? Well, okay. Yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's one last question if you want to take it. Uh, it's by Shubhadas Gupta, uh, she says, I wonder how you would respond to the fact that in India, we're often doing cultural studies within comparative literature without calling it so. The notion of text is fluid and there is constant interaction between the popular and the elitist. And there's also often several ideologies at work in our pedagogic pursuits, even in the context of comparative literature. Well, okay, yeah. Um, like, and I, I did write about that in somewhere, I forget now where, but I did write that, that, that yeah, cultural studies in some aspects, yeah. Um, in, in comparative literature, cultural studies is being done very often, but, but I also did say that a big problem is that that is the case, but comparatives do not say so. You see, they do similar things and they did similar things before even the Birmingham school, which is sort of the start of cultural studies, okay? Uh, in the seventies. Uh, and they did very similar things, but it, nev it never, and even when, when cultural studies did become important. And again, this is again, the same travel uh, I was saying. So uh, with regard to, um, Macron and 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 his his French you know against American uh, influences and all that but but so the Birmingham school came about and then the Birmingham school and its ideas were picked up in the U.S. and then because in the U.S. it became became important it went back and it became more important than Birmingham school itself so this this the, the travel of knowledge happened 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 that way. Um, but even after all this happened, when comparatives do something and, and something very similar, and maybe, maybe, maybe even include cultural studies, the, the political orientation, uh, the, the ideological orientation, 
It hardly ever. I, I don't understand why. I don't have an answer. Why they don't say, okay, this part, this idea I took from cultural studies. They don't say that. I don't understand why. Maybe it should be obvious. I don't know, but it's not. It should be said. Um, yeah, text, yeah. Okay, uh, so now we can take some live questions from the audience. If anybody wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, they can do so at this point. <clears throat> Everybody wants to have a beer. You guys. <laughs> is, there any, is there anybody who wants to ask a live question? We can do so at this point. Hi, Steven. You this is Ipshita. And hi, Amitabh. This is Ipshita. Yeah. Um, ah, I yes. have about 10 live questions, but I think I'll ask one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know where we disagree. We have disagreed for a long time. Yeah. So I'd like to reiterate the disagreements. Uh, one thing is, I think I asked that in the chat box as well. Abhishek didn't read it out. What do you think is yeah, there are too many No, continue. You can include cultural studies if you so desire. Because my next question is, uh, how do you think cultural studies is a political, b cannot be Eurocentric, and c can be applied to the canonical? So uh, well, you have my uh, full acknowledgement if you use comparative literature, what it is to answer all these three questions, as well as what is comparative literature. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I I believe that cultural studies. Um, and its political and ideological uh, perspective is, uh, as I said, I, I, okay. So if you disagree on that, we disagree. But 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 it's an important uh, part of the package. That's what they do. That's what cultural studies does. It, it it it's political, and it's good that it's political. I'm saying um, it has to be, and that's the part that I'm thinking that comparative literature and world literatures uh, could take over and use because it exposes fault lines, it exposes differences. It, it, uh, of course, of, yeah, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm a left-leaning liberal. So yeah, that, that's a problem. Okay, so if, for many- uh, If I may butt in, what yeah, yeah. makes you think comparative literature is not political? You didn't tell me what comparative literature was, by the way. Well, I mean, comparative literature, um, uh, that, that, that's, that's what I was saying with the first quotation um, with, the, with, the, with the method and method the study of literature in at least two ways. Um, the, 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 the fact that, that comparatists usually have to work in more than one language. It's, it, it, you cannot, I mean, sure, there is the type of comparative literature that, that's practiced for many uh, decades now in the United States where you can be a comparatist and you speak only English. But well, that, that is a, 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 an United States problem. Yes, Just yes, as yes. As you know, the is. crises and all of those, the deaths and, you know, the so yeah, yeah, uh, burials yeah. are all European or United States problems. I, I, yeah. I don't know whether you spoke about your own attempt to form an alternative network. But uh, I think that your work was trying to move it away from Eurocentricity by yes, saying absolutely. that comparative literature, because it studies difference and relations, is necessarily political, not because we add an S to something. Would you agree with me? I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. But, 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 and, and I'm, I also agree to say that the, the general perception that comparative literature is Eurocentric and the nation nation approach. Okay, that's the general view I have of the discipline, but it doesn't mean that there were no people who were thinking otherwise and working otherwise. But it's it's not, but 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 this otherwise more inclusive, less nation approach 
That was a minimal part, okay? And compared to literature, wherever it was, it, it, it doesn't matter whether it was done in China or, or anywhere else. They were... I, I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. You know what it was in India and you know what it is. So I, I really don't see why we should take the general approach anyway. You've never taken a general approach as far as I know for the last so many years. Yeah, well... So I, I, I mean, you know, I was hoping that you would present us with an alternative rather than with a critique which we are aware that you have established with us already. Well, okay, but the, but the alternative is comparative cultural studies. Hmm. There, that, that's the other argument, but we are yes. not going there. Let, let's talk about that. I mean, well, why, okay. should be, why, why should it be cultural studies? What's literature? Well, literature uh, to me is certainly not just what these people call the, the, the canon. You know, oh, certainly not. Certainly not. Yeah. Most so, so, not. so that's that. That's my criticism of of many who practice world literatures or li world literature, as they say in the singular. Like, uh, like uh, the, the, again, there are some minor differences between Saucy and Dammer, for instance. Uh, but, but it's it, it's mostly that approach, and I don't buy into that. Right. Um, so that, that's exactly why I'm saying that the entire argument need not circle around world literature or even the nation approach of comparative literature. I think that the entire argument needs to be reorientated. And I think you had started to do that. Well, thank you. But, but, but you see, the, the problem is that, that, that behind all of it, anything to move forward, you need the institutions. And institutions cannot work without terminologies and designations, which is why we are stuck with these with these with these things like you know the the discipline of competitive literature, cultural studies, world literature, and and, and whatever. No, you can't. I, mean, I uh, feel that we have, in fact, you are being hosted by a particular group, which is actually trying to do something else within the institution. And I don't think they're working around either world literature or cultural studies, they're working around literature. And I mean, I, we, we would like to, you know, very much vociferously proclaim that uh, we have an idea of comparative literature as well as an idea of nation that has nothing mm. to do with uh, the, you know, sort of Eurocentric ideas that we have got from comparative literature. Yeah, well, which we is- we have got it, we, we've inherited it, but I would like to think that in the last I mean, and you have been in very close contact with us for a long while. So mm. I would like to think that, uh, I mean, you know, we, we have another position altogether. Yeah. Which, begins, yeah. which, which has to begin with plurality and relationality, which has to yes. uh, kind of talk about difference and definitely take in language, as you are saying, because that is our reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which right? is good. I mean, again, yeah, you know, I don't, yeah, no, it is, it is. It is, it is, it is. <coughs> And that's what I was saying. That it's very uh, wonderful to discover that there are okay, but but as I said, uh, okay, the if, uh, is important. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, if I may add, yeah. I mean, in this debate, yeah. So this is a group of comparatists, and comparative culture studies is one of its multiple subgroups. Yeah. So perhaps we are not doing comparative culture studies and keeping comparative literature within that. Rather, our training in comparative literature here for, for students who have come from multilingual uh, background or students who have come from <clears throat> comparative literature yeah. disciplines, people who have come from monolingual disciplines, and the search for understanding comparative literature and what further can be done. We have considered comparative culture studies could be one of the aspects one of the possible ways of doing uh, work in this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think uh, the whole debate is the, I mean, is not about comparative literature as a discipline. Uh, here, I mean, the crisis that Totusi has pointed out, if Shitadi, please join, uh, is perhaps not the crisis that we are facing in India. Mm. And so uh, this whole approach is a bit different here. Mm -hmm. 
Well, which is what I was look. I was I was saying in this in this presentation. I don't know if I read it or something, but I did say that yeah, the cri the so called crisis of comparative literature in the U.S. and in Europe, it it's not necessarily the case elsewhere. In China, there are hundreds of comparative literature departments, you know, and then and as you said, in India is also a different situation. You don't have the same crisis, you know. So yeah, that that that's good. Um, and maybe, I don't know, maybe the way I work this out, the way I talk about it, maybe it's sort of a, a hidden in my back Eurocentrism. I don't know. It is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Yeah, I that's mean, excellent. It is. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, it's you difficult. have talked from your experience and your no, interpretation of that. Naturally. Right. I mean, that, that's only expected. Yeah. True. But <laughs> also, <laughs> no, also, but also, I mean, I, I really must say this again, that uh, we have been in touch since uh, the death of a discipline. Mm. Uh, because we both responded to the death of a discipline in not very positive terms at all. And yeah, since right. then, Stephen actually tried to make uh, a network of non-Eurocentric comparatists. We fell out on the matter of whether it should be called new or not, because I said we are doing exactly the same thing from a right. cultural perspective. But <laughs> Stephen did not persist. That, that, that is what I hold against him. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, where we are going is something which we still want to hear from you. We, uh, we've had enough of the analysis. <laughs> we know it. Thank you. But... <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, there were there were these attempts made. They have been made for a long while. You must, you know, I mean, and yes, you have been yes. part of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gopika, do you have a question? You unmuted yourself. Do you have a question? Okay, she's not here, I guess. And sorry to hmm. muscle in. I think Asit had a question in the chat yeah. box. Wait, wait. Chat box? Uh, the last question in the chat box is Asit's. The complete and conscious. I think he answered that question already. Yeah, I did. I further disagree if he answers it again. So I think yeah. he should leave it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but it's great to see you, though. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, Professor Amitabha, do you have any final questions or should we end this? No, no, I don't have any final question. I don't know. I don't even know the final, what would be the final question. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I must say that uh, uh, while we were trying to do a few works, and uh, the group which works here is a group uh, in which most of the participants did their masters in monolingual disciplines, then entered their MPhil, and even not not even doing MPhil and PhD, enter teaching <laughs> comparative mm. literature without having an MPhil or a PhD in comparative literature. Now, so these groups uh, exploring a comparative literary tradition and comparative literature as they want to do uh, would be different from those centers which have been doing comparative literature for long. Mm. Uh, in this, while the, we started understanding and started charting ways, this whole idea of comparative cultural studies uh, really became very relevant. Mm. I think uh, what we saw today Maybe Abhishek, the next lecture should be from Ipshitadi because this lively debate, if we continue that, uh, from of course, we all are working like uh, as uh, Ipshitadi has pointed out that you have been talking from your experience. She has been talking from her experience of a solid comparative literature, disciplinary experience. And say, for example, me coming from a monolingual department or uh, quite a lot of our participants here. So I think uh, maybe this could be a space where we have already lost our discipline when we are 
we enter to do comparative literature, we already have walked a path. Mm. We have walked apart, if not far from the monolingual training that we get. So in our search for this comparative literature, this particular debate, I think it would be very helpful if this continues. Yes. And then maybe, yeah, I think we'll also benefit from that. And the question, of course, wouldn't be whether we are doing comparative literature within comparative culture studies or comparative culture studies within comparative literature. Because uh, in, on this, uh, though I, as a convener, I don't want to really put my position. But if you look at the structure of our group, we are doing comparative literature. And within that, we are accommodating as much as many possible ways to deal with it. So I think it would be really good Abhishek is the group coordinator, if you consider of actually having a few more lectures in which you also invite Steven and if Shitadi can deliver a lecture. I mean, okay, I'm not, just because if Shitadi actually dropped in, in this debate yeah. and actually made this a lively one because yeah. uh, till then it was uh, <clears throat> a sort of, I wouldn't say preaching, because you really brought in very important issues, particularly the political scenario that determines the fate of a discipline and the adjustments that is made with uh, disciplines because of the political and funding scenario, et cetera. Mm. So I think it is important that we continue this debate. And I'm really happy that Steven started that this debate, I mean, this series. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank and you, thanks a lot. Do you guys do you guys have do you have a journal? The we Indian... are just we are just planning. I mean, we are just with the ah. first issue, working on the first issue. Yeah, yeah, because because again, you know, uh, let's continue. Great. Yeah. But then you, knowledge transfer. We, you need something that that you write so, these things down and get it out and, exactly. and maybe get other people in in, in and and yeah, that's you know, very that, important. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. well, it's too bad. It's too bad that people get old, you know, because, <laughs> you know, 15 years ago, if, we, if this happened, you know, we could, we could use my journal and use you know, all kinds yeah. of things. You know? But, but you, yeah. you, you retired. You yes. chose to retire, Stephen. Yes, yes, so, yes. So don't, yes. I mean, you know, don't blame yeah. it on anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> they tried afterwards. It's not that they did not try, but now I, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it's still a very important resource. CLC Web is an extremely important resource. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And well, it's one of the oldest that we have, really. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, almost. In fact. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. Anyway. You might yeah. also say that you started us on the road to culture studies with intermediality, which was also fifteen years ago. Yeah, I have. I had a whole section here on yeah, intermediality, right. but I didn't. So that that's within the ICLA. And yes. then you chose to leave the ICLA. So, you know, <laughs> we need to about these things. The ICLA was a problem for me because, because it was full of very conservative people, people who, who uh, there was a problem with the whole woman issue. Uh, well, true. true. The, 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 yeah, there was all kinds of things, you know, and, and, and uh, for some reason, uh, 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 Bessier thought that I was uh, somebody was pushing uh, American ideas, which I was not. And so, anyway, there was. I, I just, I, I just said, well, I don't need this shit, and I left. So, yeah. You can That's come it. right back because it's run by women now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, know, I know. So. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, well, thank you so much. Thank, uh, thank you thank very you. much, uh, Nabo as well, you. and Ubishik, because that's how I found out. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you so much. Thank yes, so and much. we'll be in touch then. Yeah, Good. we we, sorry, we sorry. are in touch. <laughs> that's how they. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keep. Okay. Keep. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay, okay. Ubishik. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Okay. Do I leave now? Yeah, I leave now. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. thank you, and we thank everyone on behalf of the Daily Company. Yes, and thank you for the audience. Thanks for the question. Thanks a yes. lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.